what is the advantages of JCR over the DBMS or what are the features of JCR? Right? The first feature you need to understand is versioning. Okay? Now what do I mean by versioning? Right? For example, let's say I go and as an author I would log in and create a page. Right? I would create a page using the template. So I log into the site admin and in here Let's go to the Geometrics English page and we go and create a page. And when we create a page, okay, a page is a collection of components. So the author, let's say here's I go and change some content and I call this as demo and I say okay. Here. Right. I basically add some content. I go and change three or four components. And when I want to take it to production, I'm going to publish. Before publishing the page, right, I could go and create versions of this page. So there's something called versioning here, the fourth tab. Okay. So I'll say base version and say create version. If you want to create a version, a number would get added here. We will wait for it to create the version. You see, 1.2.0 is the version that is created. Right? Now I go and roll it out to production, which means from the production author, the content moves to the production publish. And after two days, I come back and I want to change back. I change the content to something else. Okay, let's say some updated content, and I say okay here. So now, before actually taking me to the publish, I would again go and create a version, right? next higher version or whatever. Hey guys. Hey Mohan. Hey Rajesh. Hey, sorry about the delay. It's my bad. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. So, did I miss anything? I just came. Yeah. Basically, I'm trying to talk about the features of JCR, right? Wherein? Okay. The first feature of JCR is enabling creation of multiple versions. Okay? Now each time I modify some content, I go and say create version. You go and enter the comment and say create version. It creates a version number here. This is what I'm okay. discussing. Now what is the advantage with this, right? So after a few days when you decide okay I want to restore back to the old version, all you would want to do is go to your restore version and all the versions that have been created Right, would be shown up here. 15th February there is 2.1 and there is 2.0 here. Right? So you can go back and say restore. When you say so restore, is, that a, is that a snapshot for everything in JCR or particular exactly. branch? The entire page, the particular, yeah, everything within this page. Or oh, everything, oh, only Okay, based on page, page, not the entire based branch on, or anything. Okay. Based on the page, right? So if you see how it gets to it, right? So look at this. It's demo here. Right? Now again if I feel I want to go back to the latest version, you go to the restore version. And in the restore version, you would go and say restore. When you do that, the next version of that page is restored. Right? This is I'm after. So this way the author has the ability to restore or uh, the author has the ability to roll back to the older versions. So how is this being supported? Who supports this? This is because your JCR right, supports something called versioning. Okay. How is this getting stored? So if you basically see there is something called, uh, go to this content part. And on that node, you would see something called as GCR content, which is a child. Every page, every page is of type CQ colon page, 
and the child load of every page is ACR content. This is for sure from what we saw yesterday. And here you would see something called JCR version history. Okay. This JCR version history when you click, it will take you to a location. Okay. If you see, this is the location. And, and this has all the version nodes getting stored. Okay. 1.2 is here. This is a frozen node which will have the entire like I said, everything below the page will be added here. For 1.1.3, the same everything below the page will be added here. Okay. This is how you are able to store the versions. Is this clear with all of you? That's so, mm -hmm. so looks like um, again um, in uh, in um, AEM, everything is a resource. So exactly, everything is a resource. Exactly. So looks like this version is also a resource saved by a path in the node tree somewhere else and that's how yeah, I yeah. get all the okay okay got it makes sense here yeah, so so your in your main, main page in your main page you're trying to refer to that version here if you see you have something called as the base version so click on the base version and that is the version you are referring to. At the moment I am on 1.1.2.1 version. Okay. The base version will point to the version number here. Is that clear? No, but uh, you cannot version the portlet. Sorry? You cannot version the portlet, correct? What like, do you mean the portlet? Portlet you is can. like uh, where you just particular that uh, you know he header or footer or just like uh, in a banner you or something. See, you can version entire page, even this header, footer, everything, that is also uh, a component. Modify that and do it. You can. Yeah. You can okay, modify these, anything okay. within the space modified, create a version and oh. and, and associate it. Yeah? So, so, so what do you call this one? Like, let us say, oh, these are all called components, small components then? Yeah, this is a component, this is a logo component, this is a top navigation component, this oh, entire okay. in, this is okay, a parallel. In, okay, yeah, in, uh, in, in WebSphere uh, portal we call portlets, so. Portlets, okay. Here we call it as components, a page is comprised component. of components. Okay. Next is full text search, right? This is a feature of JCR. For example, in a normal web application, how do you do a search? Whenever you want, let's say you have a database. Let me open up. This. To find out any particular term from a database, you would have to query those tables. Right? So the only way you can find, let's say you have a books table, and a books table might have a book ID, a name, and let's say the title. Right? If you want to find out all books titled Sydney Sheldon, you would say select star from books and find it out. Right? There is no other way to get a term unless you query. But in repository, you have the search which is a built-in. So it will basically list you all the notes that has a particular term. For example, no need to write any query here. It gives you a built-in search. Right? So if you see, it is listing out all the notes that has this particular term. Okay. So that's the reason I say this gives you such full text search. The third point is your JCR right, gives you user hey, access. Yeah. This search is solar or a lucerne? This search is a lucene search. Lucene yeah, this is a Lucene index. This is a Lucene index. So it's a bundle, right? Sorry? It's, 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 it's probably a bundle behind exactly. this thing. Okay. Exactly. It's, it's a bundle. If you see this, you could validate that as well. So let's go to local post. And it doesn't have any. Um, query language is just simple search yeah it can have a query language as well you could write a SQL you could write a XPath you could write a SQL to as well 
but by default it gives you a search right? that's the advantage here so if you want to do fine search then you could do you do you do you use any kind of like what language you use? PL SQL or SQL? Okay. SQL two. You could also use XPath. We will have we have an exercise to query it. So at that point, I'll cover all those. Things. So here, okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is the query where you could go and query using those things here. XPath, SQL, SQL two. Oh, nice. Yeah, and you just say select star from star CQ page. That containing the right? we will do this anyway. It lists out all the pages. It, of course, it takes a lot of time. Okay. Anyway, we have an exercise at which point we will do. It. Next is indexing. Okay, before indexing. Your JCR also gives you with access control mechanism. How do you, you uh, how in a normal web, web application, how do you manage the users and the permissions? Anybody? In a normal web application, you would create one table called as the users table. Right? You would create a list of users. Every user will have an ID, a name. Right? You, you could have whatever you want, ID, name, phone number, and all these things. And you would have a user role table. In the user role table, you would map this. This becomes the foreign key here. And you will have read, you will have write, right? read, write, delete, all these things, and 0, 1, whatever. 0 is for true, 0 is for false, 1 is for true. And you would map these IDs here, and you would also give the module. Right? You would also give the module. This is the way you will have to manually create it here. But in A, Right. There are, in JCR, there is a framework which is called as the user admin console where all those things are already taken care of. So as an administrator, you just have to check or uncheck it. Look at how simple it is. Right. If you see any user, all you need to do is double click on the user, create a new user and double click on the user and you would see the permissions here where you would go and check or uncheck and whatever you are seeing here is the snapshot of the repository that we saw here in our CRXDE If you see, this is the same snapshot that you see. All you need to do is for this particular user, whether I want to read, whether I want to modify, whether I can create, delete. Read ACL is whether this user, ACL means access control lock, right? This entire snapshot is called ACL. Whether this guy can read this, whether this guy can edit it, means whether he has permission to check or uncheck, whether he can activate, replicate means activate. So all this, uh, the, this is the mechanism. So you don't need to write even a single line of code, nor maintain any tables or anything. So access control is a feature of your JCR. Any questions? We have an exercise, detailed exercise on the user mechanism. So we will cover that. Then we have indexing. Okay. What do I mean by indexing? In a normal database, In a normal database, let's say I have, uh, the, let's take books example. In a books table, I would have the ID, 
I would have the username right age phone number title title so for example I can somebody explain what an index is in database in a normal book what do I mean by index you would have some terms instead of having to look over every page in the book you would rather look at the index page and look for the key term and then go to the particular page in a database instead of having to iterate over every record every column you would choose some specific column as an index and because an index is called right because an index is created right when you query something you could directly refer from the index which will point to that particular record right so that way you identify some columns as indexes in a normal in a jcr you could index based on the columns you could index based on columns which means I would go to my oak colon index there is a node called oak colon index where I go and specify uh, based on what properties I need to index okay so if you see by default already many index properties are specified so you basically specify based on what property you want to index okay so these are all the built-in indexes when you start the server for the first time you you would see this on your machines. Okay. So if you see this, you would specify the property name, which is given as CQ colon template, and just mention the reindex, set it to true, so that it's going to rebuild the index. Okay. And this is you are basically trying to index based on the property. So when you want to create a new property to index, copy this, right, and paste it again, and just go and change the name. In fact, this has to be let me tell you this has to be below the oak index. So let's copy paste it here and just change the property name to whatever property name you want to index on. So that way you are going to rebuild an index and where does the index get added? The index would get added in your CRX quick start folder. You have something called as repository and in your repository you would see that there is an index. So the your entire index is getting added here. Okay. It will be added inside this. So your entire index is getting added inside your index, inside the repository index. Right? This is where it's getting created. Any questions on it? So that way, whenever you enter the search term, right, the search will first ha happen. So because all your nodes are indexed, it will go via the index first, and then it will look for all the nodes. Okay, that's how you are indexing. Works. Any questions? On it? Who provides this indexing? It is your JCR that gives you the index. So look at the explanation and let me know if you have any question. Yeah, is this okay all of you? Okay, are you able to hear me, all of you? Yes. 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 Okay. The next feature is something called as JCR observation framework. Okay. Now what do I mean by observation framework? Okay. What are some of the JCR events that can occur? A node can get added, right? A new node can get added, modified or deleted. Or a property on this, right? I could go and add, delete, or modify an existing property. Now it's similar to a trigger in SQL. Whenever something happens, you want to execute a function. Right? Similarly here, when any of these nodes get added, modified, or deleted, if you want to execute a Java class, right? so in such a case, right, you would go and leverage the JCR observation framework. The way the JCR observation framework works is, whenever 
a node added, modified, or deleted. Right? You can execute a Java code that's given by a done by a JCR observation framework. We have an example at in a later point of time. So, for example, scenario for this one would be: let's say I'm connecting to a third-party feed, external third-party feed, and I'm connecting to the stock code of Adobe. So, if you see that external feed. Right, is updating the stock price every five minutes. So the last time it updated was on second February at six thirty by my watch, right? Three minutes back. And it is storing the Adobe stock price, which is one eighteen point seven three. So every five minutes, if I want to check the the price, and I could also have, uh, let's say, I could have a threshold value set if you hundred ten hundred and fifteen. If it goes above the threshold value. I want to notify all my stakeholders, right? Or if there is a five percent change on a day, I want to notify my thresholders. So in such a case, each time this property modified event occurs, I can I can have a Java class that executes, right? So that is called as observation. So you need to explain these five features when you are asked what is the advantage of JCR, uh, what are the features of JCR. We need to talk about this. Is this clear, all of you? Features of JCR. So, the number five JCR observation is sounds like it's an event. Exactly, it's like an event listener. It's a JCR event listener. A JCR event listener is called observation framework. There is a framework. You don't need to write any code. It's only there. You just need to add the Java code. Uh, right. What well, what it needs to execute exactly. based on. Okay. What is the business logic that needs to occur? Got it. Okay. Now, some more things uh, on the JCR. Everything is a node in JCR recollection. Every node has a mandatory property called JCR primary type. Right? This is what we saw yesterday. So this JCR colon here that you see is called as the namespace. Okay. If you see, when you click on a node, see every node has it. JCR colon means that JCR is the namespace. Now this namespace is added so that you can avoid the conflict. For example, you have content here, and you have a content here. Now it, it doesn't make sense to have the same content twice. Okay? So your sling will have a confusion then, which node to resolve properly. So just the reason you would prefix this one with a namespace so that you could avoid the conflict of the node names. Okay. That is called as a namespace. Credit indicates namespace. JCR primary type indicates the type of node. Now, every node has associated properties. There are different node types. Whenever I create a page inside admin, yesterday we saw a CQ page is created. And the child of a CQ page is JCR colon content. Always, you look at any page, and it, the child of any page has a page icon here. The child is JCR content. Okay. The child of uh, any page is JCR colon content. And we also saw these things: multi-create, multi-auto-created, all these things. Okay. So today, we will look at the structure of the CRX Quick Start repository. So whenever we start the server, a CRX quick start folder gets generated. And inside here, what exactly exists? The first thing that exists here is the log files. Okay. Whenever you start the server, by default, you would see these logs getting created. Now, what are the different types of logs? Okay. The first one is something called as access log. The access log gives you information about the IP address of the requests that are coming into your server, and what are the requests that are coming into your server. So, if you try to look at the log, If you see this, this is the IP address. 
of the logs that are coming in and it basically tells you what all are the URLs. So I just try to access the CLX in the index. This is HTTP request. The server responded with a response of 200 and 0, .0, 0.0.0 is the local host. So this way it also gives you information around the browser, IP address and what requests are being made. So in your production, uh, let's say something is breaking up or any issues, it will be easy for you to fix because you will know the IP address and the requests that are being sent out. So this is your access log. So I've added a point on the access log somewhere here. It gives you IP address, what requests are being made and the browser details. Okay. And the browser details. The next one is something called as the error log. Okay. Your error log, whenever you are encountering any errors, right? basically let's say a component is not working, something not working, the first inspection to do is your error log. If there are any errors, you will see a stack trace, Java stack trace in your error dot log. So this is the first file that you will always open when there are any issues. Okay. So if you see, equal right click, say here it would not start this place. And get hold of the stack trace. Get hold of the stack trace. If there are any errors, it will give you an error stack trace. Basically, you will have the timestamp. You will have this uses log4j framework for logging. Log4j will have info, error, warn, and all these things. Okay. And the way it's working here is every day. Today is 15th, so it is trying to maintain the log files of five days. This is a daily rotation log. So can I configure these things? Yes, this entire logging is configurable. Where do I configure the logging? You would go to your system console. And in your system console, Go to the configuration. Yeah, OSGI config. This is where you can configure your entire your entire AEM. Right? They are designed in such a way that it is all configurable. Okay. So it's taking time to load. So let's wait. Yeah. It opens the config manager here and search for logging. So all the logs, right, what Java packages your log file should open, everything is configurable here. For example, I have something called as project Voltec. And here when you create OSGI bundle, a bundle contains Java classes which contain packages. So you could say farm.test. You could add the Java classes here. This is the timestamp, right? Date and timestamp. And how should the log rotation happen? will be added in the log writer config here. Okay. And in the log writer config, you could go and specify. See, the error.log has a daily rotation. If you feel, I don't want a daily rotation, I want one single file and if it exceeds 10 MB, I want to delete the old. So you could either add the size or you could add the rotation. Right. So here, it's daily rotation and I want to retain five files, right? So that's the reason you are seeing one, two, three, four, four, five in addition to the current log. Okay? Either you could go for the size or you could go for the daily rotation. It is all configurable here. Is this clear? Can I create my own log file? Yes. All you need to do is just go and create a new config here. Okay? Just create a new config and add the name of the log. That's the way you would work on. Is this clear, guys? All of you? This is your error log. The next kind of log that you would want to know is your request dot log. The the request dot log. Whenever you open up any page, let's say I open up the demo.
how do I find out the request running for a page? I will go to my SQL refresh. Go to your network tab. My page is rendering because these many requests are being served. Right? Now these requests are available in something called request dot log here. And by the way, whatever logs I'm explaining are the out of the box, which are the logs that are available by default, right? These are not the ones which I have configured. So if you see, here's a request log. And here, here you would see that this, these request logs are available. Right? Basically, these are the requests that are being. How do you how do you read this? The arrow to the right points. Uh, request one one two eight zero with a uh, request with request ID one one two eight zero is being made, and this is the request here, right? And when I made this particular request, the server responded back with a two hundred status. So uh, the left arrow is the response for the server. And it took a total of 125 milliseconds for this request to get. So basically, how does this help me in real time? Right? So let's say you load a page and your page is taking a lot of time for the page load. And the issue comes to you for performance optimization. So you would go look at the request logs, identify which requests are taking in more time, and then you will get an idea of what exactly to debug. Right? That's the advantage you get with it request now. Is this clear? This is your request log. The next kind of log that you will have to know here. When, when I start the server, if there are any errors during the server startup, right? All I know, if I double click on the jar, I would see a pop-up and I don't see any errors. So where exactly are those errors getting logged? And where can I see the server console is your standard error and your, so if you see, the standard error gives you a stack trace of the server startup. So if there are any errors during startup, it will be available here. Okay, your server stack trace. Any errors during server startup will be available in your standard error. And uh, as it is, whatever console that you are seeing here, okay, in the second startup, whatever you are seeing here, you could also find it in the standard out. Okay, so your standard out tells you, gives you information. This is the standard output console for your server. Standard error is it locks all the errors, and standard console is where you add the information of the server. Is this clear guys, all of you? Any questions? Okay, good. So you saw how to create a config and also you could add a log writer so that you can specify whether it is or provide a threshold of the size. Either you could add this or you could, you could create your own log. So this might be an important aspect. Now having said this, what is the next topic? So I want to talk about Just give me a second. I want to explain. Now, yesterday, like you saw, how is where is this getting persisted? 
and anybody tell me how is it that the same state of the nodes are getting added each time? Whatever this entire snapshot is getting persisted to your repository as tar files. So if you see your repository, in your CRX quick start, under your repository, right, it is getting added to something called segment store, right? And if, if you see, it is 256 KB here. Every top file has 256 KB. The moment it goes to 256 KB, it is trying to create a new tar, new tar, new tar. Uh, so uh, basically, that is uh, that is also configurable. Right? The moment it exceeds 256, 263, right, it's creating a new tar file. And it is automatically get the snapshot is getting persisted as star files within my segment store. In my repository, I would see something called segment store where I'm able to see all of these things. Okay. So that is your repository. So if you ask me, if I delete all these star files, will I be able to see the same state of the repository? Here? What do you think is the answer, guys? If I delete these star files, do you think I'll be able to see the same structure? Nah. Correct. So you should always maintain the state of the repository by preserving. So in production, when you want to take backup, you go and take a snapshot of this repository folder. That's one of the backup strategies. Where are the bundles getting persisted? The bundles so, are in your launch part. Rajesh, so if you back up the repository folder, something happened to the server all you need to copy your backup to the repository and everything will be as exactly all the nodes will be exactly the way it was exactly so it is better to backup the entire CRX quick start oh entire so CRX quick start okay con config uh, the bundles everything will get restored and do you uh, when the backup system backup the CRX quick start uh, it can back up everything or uh, it can yeah, conflict it can with... back up everything you could you could try this as an exercise right have okay, something okay. have create a CX quick start create a couple of pages got okay? it delete uh -huh. your CX quick start and copy paste from your pen drive or wherever you back it up and see okay. what happens sure I'll try that thanks okay. next the next thing you need to understand here is uh, so we saw, we understood this. We understood locks. We understood repository. What is this launch pad? So if you remember, all the bundles that you see, right, are available in your Felix and your bundle. So if I delete this, will I be able to see the same jar files? No. So this is a physical location is very important. So you need to take care of this launch pad as well. Okay. So that is your launch pad. Then. The bin folder has the start and the stop scripts. This is the SH file for Unix. This is the bat file, stop file. Right? These are the things you need to know. The next thing, I think if you know these things, it should be enough. You have OPT. The OPT folder has all the helper tools. Like these are all the tools, rlog.jar, jtile, proxy, CRX tool. These all these have the OPT folder. Let me add this one. The CRX quick start. Repository folder has two things. Okay, one is index store where all the indexes are stored next one is the segment store where the entire repository is persisted as 
segment within the segment store. Then you have your launch pad. These are the same bundles that you see in here. Okay. Any questions with till whatever we have done today? Okay. So if you have no questions, uh, we'll drop off for today and we'll come back.